Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another TV video. And this time we're looking at LG's newest QNED TV, their 2021 Mini LED TV. The model I have here is the 75 inch QNED 99. It's an 8K screen with HDMI 2.1, 120Hz, HDR10 and has full array local dimming. This means it's capable of producing deeper blacks, better contrast and more accurate colours. Today I'll do a quick unboxing, we'll set it up and then we'll talk about picture quality, movies, gaming and any pros and cons I've found so far. Any questions about this TV please drop those in the comments. I've also put a link in the description about this TV along with the timestamps if you wish to skip ahead. So this is the box that the QNED99 comes in and it mentions some of the specs on the box and obviously most of those we will cover today. Inside it comes with everything that you would expect to see. So if you're not wall mounting it, it comes with a two part stand in silver that you can use instead. Then there are the manuals and setup instructions, two packs of screws for the stand, a remote control and some batteries. Plus there are some cable tidies and a back plate for the stand which I'll show you a little bit later. So this is the stand that it comes with. Now although I usually warm out my TVs, I will be fitting this stand today which means I can show you how to install it. But just bear in mind you will need at least two of you to lift this TV up. Now this is the front curved piece that will go on the front of the TV and you actually attach that to the rear support using the four available screws. Once you've done this, LG actually recommends laying the TV flat onto the packaging that's provided. So that's using the cardboard and the polystyrene pieces. Then you just need to lift that TV up and out of the box and put it back onto the cardboard below. The stand that you've just made before, well that now just clicks onto the back of the TV and it attaches using those four remaining screws. Once you're done, you just need to lift the TV up and put it onto your unit and now we're done. So before we get this TV set up, let's take a look at the rear of the TV first. So if you are wall mounting it, you'll use these recessed areas at the top instead of the typical VESA mounts that we see. This means the TV will sit really, really flush to the wall as the bracket or mount will be hidden inside the TV. All of the ports are actually designed for wall mounting as well. As you can see here, none of them actually point away from the TV, so the cables will be flush. So these are all of the available ports on this QNED. We've got four HDMI 2.1 ports capable of 8K60 or 4K120. That's perfect for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Port number two is an eARC, so that's ready for sending content to and from your soundbar or your AVR. There are also three USB ports, an optical out, a wired network port, and a headphone port. Then over to the left side, we've got the non-removable power cable. That's something that we've seen LG doing for a number of years now, but it could be a little bit of a nuisance if you're wall mounting your TV and you need to put that power cable through the wall. Then there's this cable management channel built into the stand below where you can actually hide your power cable or your HDMIs. So once the cables are in, you just clip this little cover over the top and it keeps those out of sight. And this is how big this TV is. So bear in mind, this is the 75 inch version of the QNED99. But here are the dimensions on screen. I've actually added some measurements that you would not see online. So hopefully this will be useful to you. Turning it around, let's see what it looks like from the front. So the overall style is really nice. It's got a kind of like a square design with a brushed metal looking edges. And for an LCD TV, it's actually pretty thin. It's got like a G1 OLED style going on here. It looks minimal, slim and sleek, and it's definitely optimized for wall mounting. The stand at the bottom is curved as we saw before, and it has that same brushed metal look. And as it's not as wide as the TV, you don't need a massive TV unit to sit it on. Then if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you can actually see the LG QNED branding. That's a nice little touch. It's something that I have seen on the NanoCell range before. Setting it up for the first time only takes about 10 minutes. You just need to go through the setup procedure, accepting the terms, and choosing whether you're using the stand or wall mount in it. Then enabling the AI functions like AI Picture and Sound Pro. I've actually got both of these switched on. Then connect to your network and sign in using the LG app. Now the first thing to do once you have got it set up is check for updates. When I got this TV, it wasn't on the latest version, so things like the game optimizer mode was totally different. Oh, and make sure you turn the energy saving mode off. This will make a huge difference to the brightness of the picture. This TV is absolutely awesome for gaming. And the fact that all of the ports are HDMI 2.1 is ready for the PS5, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. And one of the biggest and most impressive things about this TV is the fact that it comes with LG's game optimizer mode. We've seen this mode already on LG C1 and G1 and having used that for the last few months, I can safely say it's an awesome feature to have. So once you've plugged in your PS5, your Xbox or your PC, press the settings button on the remote control and you'll get this new overlay. It shows you what frame rate your game is running at along with the black stabilizer, low latency and any AI game sound options. Then depending on the game that you're playing, you can actually choose one of the different picture setting modes and that will actually optimize the picture for that game. You can change the game genre to FPS, RPG and RTS. All of these have slightly different picture settings that you can tweak. FPS, for example, well, that boosts the shadows very, very slightly. 
So yeah, this new game optimizer area really does give us control over what we want to do while gaming. And whether I'm playing Warzone, Cold War or Forza on the Xbox, I can make the most of this little menu at one click of a button. But just a very quick note though, that this QNED does not come with a VRR support. That's variable refresh rate. So as this is the 75 inch model, it's no good having a big screen if the quality is terrible, but this TV does not disappoint. It's an 8K IPS panel and it's kind of the ultimate evolution of LCD. It's made up of mini LED backlights combined with quantum dot nanocell color technology. I know that's a lot to take in, but basically it brings enhanced brightness, deeper blacks and a more accurate color reproduction to the screen. The black levels on this are very, very good for an IPS panel. I actually reviewed the 86 inch Nano 91 last year. I don't know if you've seen that. And I can safely say this QNED is a lot better. Everything that I've watched on it looks vibrant and it's not dull or washed out at all. Something you'd normally see on LCDs. Over the last week, I've been watching a few different movies on Netflix and Disney Plus. And coming from using an OLED every single day, I was really impressed with just how rich the colors looked. If there's any interest, I was thinking of doing a comparison between the QNED and my OLED, and maybe even a different LCD TV. Let me know if you'd like to see that. There are nine different picture modes on this TV, including cinema, vivid, eco, and the ISF modes. Each can be tweaked depending on your preferences or your room brightness. Now I've played around with them all, and I've actually settled on this cinema mode, and I've edited that one. I either use cinema or the ISF bright. I'm pretty happy with the overall image quality, and out of the box, it's not bad at all. Just remember to turn that energy saving mode off. So this QNED has full array local dimming pro and that means unlike other LCDs it's actually capable of controlling more zones with the mini LED backlight. This alone makes a huge difference to the black levels and the dark scenes. So here for example I'm watching a really dark scene at night and normally you'd expect to see a halo or a light bleed around anything lighter or brighter than the rest of the screen. Subtitles are the real test and as you can see the mini LEDs do an awesome job of controlling those zones. It's actually been really enjoyable to watch this TV at night. I actually have the LED local dimming set to low, you can either set to off, low, medium or high. I found low to be the best option. So this QNED99 also supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, as well as HDR10 and HLG. Dolby Vision and Atmos are always my preferred formats as it really does bring the most realistic cinematic experience to the screen. And as I watch a lot of movies on Netflix, it's awesome to see that most shows or movies that I now watch do support these formats. But there's also another mode called Filmmaker Mode. Now I have actually got this switched on, and this is ideal if you want to see the movie you're watching in the director's original vision, including things like aspect ratio, colours and even frame rates. It then turns off motion smoothing by default, although that's a setting that I always have off anyway. Now as this is an 8K screen, the resolution is 7680 by 4320. Now that's massive and it means the quality really is incredible. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of native 8K content out there to watch right now. I did watch a few 8K demos and some YouTube videos just to test this out. And from what I've seen so far, it's really, really impressive. Plus it's capable of upscaling content to 8K using the Alpha 9 Gen 4 processor. Now hopefully over the coming years, we'll see more and more 8K content available, especially on movies. But let me know in the comments if there's a movie that you would love to see in 8K and maybe drop some recommendations for something that I should watch. So generally speaking, LCD panels and IPS panels are known for their poor viewing angles. As soon as you try to view the TV off center, the colors are washed out and it looks pretty poor. But this QNED mini LED TV has really, really surprised me. To the point that it doesn't matter where in the room you're viewing it, the colors and contrast almost don't change at all. So as I move around the screen, you can really see that there's only a very slight difference, but it's still watchable. And when it comes to reflections on the TV, well, like with any TV, you're going to get some kind of reflection. But this QNED must have some sort of anti-reflective coating. It's almost like a matte finish. It means as you're watching it during the day, for example, you can still see what's on screen rather than what's in the room behind you. Obviously, if you directly angle the TV against a window, you're going to see that. But overall, it's pretty impressive. If you've seen the previous 2020 LG remotes, you'll see this 2021 model looks very slightly different. It's now got a flatter design in both looks and feel, and it's slightly smaller when comparing it to last year's remote. We've got some quick access buttons on the bottom, including Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus, and the scroll wheel in the center is a lot firmer than it was before. And as this is a magic remote, it means you've still got that floating arrow on screen. You can use that to navigate around the menus. I personally like the magic wand, although I know some people think it's still a little bit gimmicky. And as with all 2021 models, we've now got WebOS 6.0, which brings a new UI, dashboard and home screen area. For me, the biggest change is the app launcher. I covered this briefly during my C1 video that I did a few months ago, but you can see here that the overall design of the dash is totally new. Any apps you install will show up here now across the bottom, and you can rearrange them however you'd like. Then below that, you've got the recommended or trending shows. Then there's also the app store, which to be honest, hasn't changed a great deal. But this is where you can download any other apps you'd like, including things like Spotify and Plex and Amazon Prime and loads more. 
It comes pre-installed with plenty, but if you are looking for apps like BBC and ITV or any of the other UK streaming services, you'll have no issue with downloading those from this. If you're interested in knowing what the speakers sound like, they're okay. But if you're getting a screen like this for movies and gaming, I would highly recommend picking up at least a soundbar. But take a listen to this anyway. So in summary, the 2021 QNED Mini LED TV is really, really impressive. It's got an 8K resolution, HDMI 2.1, full array local dimming, decent viewing angles, and no risk of burning if that's something that you're worried about. For an LCD, I'm very impressed with the QNED 99. I've dropped a link in the description if you want to check that out. It also lists the full specs of the TV, prices for your country, and it's also available in 65, 75, and 86 inches. And something I mentioned earlier was I was considering doing a comparison of this QNED against my OLED and maybe a different LCD. And if that's something you're interested in or you're intrigued by how this stacks up against OLED, please let me know in the comments. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. Also, any questions you've got about this TV, please drop those in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.